Hello, this is Jeff Ryle from G4 Geomatic Resources in Houston, Texas. And this will be the third video in the series uh, on basic coding. In this one, we're going to be using uh, point coding, using the like align work features, and uh, show the attributes, and also the use of code templates. Okay, welcome back uh, to our second video in coding points. And what it is, I created a new job here, say in coding points number two. And let's take a quick, quick look at our settings. We'll come down here, hit settings, customization, coding. And in the first video, uh, we used the code points only with no line work. In this video, we're gonna code points, but use the create line work feature. Let's see how that differs. And once again, the boxes are checked, allow new codes to be created and show the description. And then down here, we'll have all those prompt for mandatory attributes. Let's hit the OK button, and um, what we now do is go to Setup, and we're going to set up using a node back site. And once again, the job is going to be from our first job, coding points. Pick point number one, and there's the in instrument height. New instruments again, we can hit F4, measure height to measure that, confirms the coordinates of that starting point. We hit OK, and we'll, we'll back site point number two. And we're shooting at reflectless as a zero target height for the back sight. Azimuth is 200. Unhit F2 distance, take a shot. That checks the horizontal and the height within 200, 6,000 is vertical. That looks great. So we're on the two right points, we'll hit F1 set. And that'll set the orientation. It's very important. And now we're ready to collect data. If I come down now to take a look at the measure screen, uh, we'll come in. And if we error back over, we're going to notice that there's a bunch of grayed out points here. What are those points? It looks a lot similar to our previous jobs. So we escape back out of here and come up here to our jobs and scroll over to the far left. We're going to hit function home, take us to the end. My design job, this is showing the points grayed out in the background. So we can see what points were already picked up. This allows us to see the points we previously collected and fill it in to make sure there's no gaps. So that's very handy. So we'll hit OK. I've now hit function lock and lock that job so don't change it by mistake. Let's go back to the measure screen and let's collect some points and use the code list to collect points. So once we can do now, what I'll do is first of all, page over to the first screen. Just like we saw before, angle right zero. I'm gonna start collecting data at point number 20. There's our angle right, come over here and then our azimuth is 200. And I'm gonna leave it on this screen here to see my target height. So in the previous video, um, we were collecting code information on this screen. If I had to change my target height, I can just page over to point number two and change it right here. That alleviate the chance of, of you know, from collecting data fast and um, I accidentally go down and, and if the target height's on that same screen, I can go down and change the target height by mistake. I want to page over to page number two. That way the target height is separate and out of line of fire. What we'll do now is we'll click on this icon here. So when we, when we use the line work command, there's a little icon with a tree and a fence. And what we can do now, if I want to do my first code of NG, when I type it in, it'll go take a look and pick the NG from the list. And now a box comes up and shows there's my code. And this will then have the little dot means we're collecting points. So what I can do is I can just move on over to my first point that's natural ground, take a shot, point and now it's a sticky code. So I just keep on moving along. Point stored. I'll shoot and do natural natural ground shots. Point okay. stored. Let's take a look at uh, one that has an attribute. So if I hit TR or for tree, and then we move over and pick up a tree, hit enter or measure. This one has an attribute, and one's gonna ask for the drip line. So say the drip line was 12 feet. And the type, we can scroll through and say is an oak and hit okay. And now we're building up a list here. So we have a list of codes here. And then once again, if I wanna add another code, um, we can do that as well. So I want like the toe to slope, top of slope, top of curve. We can type in hit TO and it'll go down and look at the uh, those codes. Okay. And we can build that up. 
So what's kind of neat is I can keep those codes here. I can arrow over here and see all those codes as well. So you can have as many codes as you want over here with your most common codes. And just, if I want to go back to natural ground, I can just go down, select natural ground, and keep on collecting data. Quite what's neat is I can store this. Um, so what I did is, is I can hit function, clear one or clear all. So if I clear these out, let's say we clear them all out. And what we'll do is we'll arrow back over because it is nice to have your codes here. You can graphically see the data that we're picking up over here. Um, if I hit uh, function, the hotkey function F7, that will then load my code template. And I've got a couple templates here. I've got topo one and boundary one. Let's take a look at topo one. So what I did is I, I built up, we'll expand over here. I built the most common codes here. You can see I made a mistake in this uh, template. So I got natural ground, twice. So I'll hit function and let's say clear that one. And let's say I want to def define a new code that's not in the code list. So GB grade breaks not in the code list. I'll hit F4 define, hit code, and hit new. And then I can type in GB. And then I can type in the description grade break. And we'll keep it as a point, there's no line work, store that, and then we'll hit OK. And now um, I've got those codes, and I might want to add top of slope and toe of slope as well. Okay. And then what I could do is I could say write function tools and then say store that to a template and call that topo1 or topo2. So let's say we redefine that, we'll call that topo2. Okay, let's store that. Now I can just collect data, I can walk around. So if I was uh, collecting data, and let's say using a GS18, I got gray break, stores it, then I got toe slope, natural ground, and then top of slope. So I can scroll around, I can click and pick those codes. And let's say you can have like up to as many codes as you want, but maybe pick your top, you know, eight or nine codes and then select it really fast to, to collect a lot of data really fast and efficiently. Once again, if I hit my uh, hotkey, I could hit function tools or the hotkey that I defined. And if it says load template, I can then change that to boundary, hit okay. And now I quickly have a different set of codes here. So this is the ones I use a lot for my boundary corners. So once again, if I came across like an iron rod, hit that. And once again, it's got a mandatory attribute. So it says, what's the size? I'll go through the pick list, say it's half inch. It's a spinner and it's not capped. And we hit OK. All right. And if I'm finished with that code template, I can simply just hit function clear all and I'm back to pick my individual codes and keep collecting data. So this is just a quick way to show you how you can collect data using the line work feature. The next video will go over line work and show that functionality, but in this case, we just want to show how to collect points and uh, use the, the, the like a code and to collect those points. Okay, um, what we'll do is take a quick look at the simulator to show you one more feature. So um, a common question is, if we come into the measure screen, uh, let's say I type in a code TO, and it's gonna go down and, and grab this TOC, because that's it's gonna grab the TOC code from my code list. If I wanted to store just TO on the fly, just I could type it in. Uh, if I hit enter, once again, do top of curve, I can hit this back arrow key here, and it'll hold it there, and then hit enter. And if I measure that point, it'll store that point uh, to, to, my, uh, to my code list, okay? Now, what we can do is if we define new codes, new templates, how do we store that to our code list? Because if I created a brand new job, it'll keep the original code list that I had. So we come here and hit our job, that's where we define the new codes, and went to view and edit job properties. We want to click on the code list tab. And this is the current code list. And see there's an import. If I hit the function button 
export. This will allow me to export any code, in this case, set and store that code, but any templates would also be stored to that code list. I can take a quick look at my codes here and uh, hit function sort. I could resort instead of the original order by code name, hit OK, and then hit OK there. If I store that, it will then resort that code table. So if we did create a new code like TO or uh, BO for Bollard, then we store that. That way, if we create a new job, that code is now updated, and any updates to the templates are also stored to take advantage of to recreate those templates every time I do a, a new new job. Okay. Um, what we'll do is take a quick look. So once again, the idea of this is if I have my templates, like over here, in this case, we have a template here with high bank, top of slope, toe of slope, grade break. You can see if I had a DS18 as topo and data, I could see my top eight or nine codes right here and just click on these codes to collect data really fast. So it's topo and going from, you know, grade break, natural ground, top of slope, toe of slope to high bank. I collect data really fast whether I'm using a GS18 or the uh, AP20 tilt pole with the robotic. That would really, these are already tremendous tools uh, using the tilt to increase your productivity. But by using this template and this like a coding line work, even just using the points, this can dramatically increase your productivity. Well, I hope you found this uh, video beneficial and helpful, and uh, we'll keep on doing a couple more series in line work to help you improve your efficiency. Thanks for paying attention.